Take a look at the stock market and you see a bumpy ride. It goes up for reasons it should go down. It drops for reasons it should go up. Nothing makes any sense, so the default is to just buy. As time goes on, people are being squeezed into fewer and fewer trades, all taking the same bets. Can you guess what people are buying in 2018? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today, we are going to look at various economic indicators, and I want to begin with this. You're looking at this out of FactSet and Goldman Sachs, and they are showing us the retail investors and what they are buying today. You will see familiar names on this list, whether it is Netflix, Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and others. There was one that I did not see on this list, and that is Alphabet. However, many of these are familiar names to the average person. And so, I want to talk a little bit about what happens throughout these cycles. In any bull market, and any bear market, the same general thing happens. We see a falling in prices, nominally, whether that is for equities, bonds, perhaps commodities, precious metals, mining, could be any sector. So we look into all of these things and we see attractive valuations in different areas. So investors, when they feel the confidence to begin putting their money in, they tend to spread it out. And as time goes on, things become more expensive. You see things becoming less attractive. And so they pull out their money from one sector and they put it into the ones which have been performing well. The ones which perform better, obviously, people shift their portfolio more into that. And that is occurring today at a very, very rapid rate. It's not a good sign because this squeezing, this bottleneck that is occurring always happens at the peak of any bull market. I'm not saying that it's going to happen. I'm telling you what has happened historically. This could go on for a lot longer. I'd like to see some QE4 get the party started. But as of this moment here, we can just see that the total amount of money seems to be falling out of certain sectors and going into just a handful of stocks. That really is the big trade today. We saw people shorting the VIX. That was the, you know, all the rage for a while until that almost brought in some devastating effects and we still haven't got to the same highs we were at previously. It's very interesting. Everybody taking one trade and as soon as that didn't work out, things started to look very, very ugly in the stock market. Household equity allocation has risen. You will see this here. Since the financial crisis, clearly rising on the right hand side you will see margin debt is at multi-decade highs one of the worst one of the most frightening things about the stock market about the financial system today is margin many people use margin and i think that this is a very big mistake a lot of people say why i can make a lot of money using margin i don't need to front all the money I could simply put down a little bit, but I can bet a lot. Seems like a great idea to me, considering the stock market always rises, until it doesn't. The problem with margin is that when the stock market drops by even a small percentage, suddenly you get hurt very bad. And that's what people don't factor in. They simply take the bet hoping that the market will rise. But you need to be prepared for fluctuations. That's inevitable in any market at any given time. But people 
They saw throughout 2017, month after month after month after month of gains, so they thought, here we are, a perpetual rise. Well, they thought that in 1929 as well, but here we are. Total consumer credit, looking at how impressive the gains have been since the financial crisis. Showing us a gain of 47% throughout this time frame, hitting nearly $4 trillion. $4 trillion worth of consumer credit. A lot of analysts will actually say that this is beneficial. People are spending, they have the confidence, things are doing well. I would take the opposite, you know, opposite thoughts on that, that's for sure. Auto loans and leases going up to new heights yet again. The amount of money that people are spending on vehicles is truly astronomical. We are seeing people taking on debt that they never would have before. You know, most people would have purchased cars or leased cars that they can afford. Today, they take on whatever they can get, the maximum. And you see more and more and more luxury cars on the streets today than ever before. Whether you see your typical Mercedes, BMW, Audis, and many others, we are now seeing McLarens, Lamborghinis, and Ferraris, and Bentleys, and Rolls Royce every day on the streets here in Toronto, and I'm sure it's in every other major city. It's pretty crazy to see the quantity of very high-end cars. These cars are potentially $200,000, $400,000. Credit cards and other revolving credit, I've shown you this before, it's expanding here. Now, it did come down, and that is truly worrisome. Because this debt binge that is going on is supporting this fraudulent system. I don't like it, but that's the way it works. But if it starts to turn over, this entire game is over. The Fed will have to come in and hyperinflate the currency. Student loans, showed you this before, crossing over that $1.5 trillion mark. It consistently, every single year, it's increasing. More people are taking on student loans and they can't pay it back. Right now, the yield curve is dangerously close to flattening. Then, soon after, it will invert. Looking at the 2 in 10 rule, the spread between the 2-year treasury and the 10-year bond, we see the spread is at its lowest it's been since the Great Recession of 2008. Look at where it's heading and look at how this has affected previous cycles. The exact same thing keeps occurring. Am I saying that there's going to be a crash tomorrow? No. But in this regard, this 2 in 10 rule, there's going to be an event in the near future. That's what this is showing us. I don't know, but that's what it's showing us. Every single time it crosses that line, we have a big problem. And we are basically almost there. We're going to keep our eyes on that, that's for sure. Average consumer checking account balance. You can see that this has been rising. And why do you think this is the case? Well, what I can tell from what I have read is that people are not confident and that people have to spend more on their daily lives. They don't have the ability to get into much more debt, they ride it to the maximum. Now, I don't know how this is really working out because if the average person is looking at their checking account in the positive territory, that would go against what I have seen previously. But I think when you take it as a whole and not necessarily take the bottom, let's say 50%, you could average them all out. I don't think that this is very accurate when looking at the whole. If we look at, let's say, the bottom 80% of people, I think this would give us a better picture 
of what's happening. A lot of people have consumed way too much debt. They max it out. And then they have, you know, this little small amount in their bank account if they have anything. And that goes, you know, to be used with food, their bills, and so on. They max out the debt, as I've shown you here, big problem. And then, you know, what's left for cash is basically used on their daily purchases. Okay, last but not least, U.S. economic expansions, cumulative real GDP. As time goes on, this market keeps showing us that it is, in fact, the weakest and potentially longest bull market in history. 21.6%, you could see the growth here, cumulative, looking at it right here. It's funny how despite the fact that it has been going on for such a long period of time, actually the growth is not very good. And this is with all of the games that they've been playing with the GDP numbers. I just think it's quite funny to see how it all has unfolded. I'm going to end it there. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. Last but not least, if you found the video informative, I know that you will find my books, The Money GPS, and my newer release, Global Economic Collapse, even more informative. You can actually flip through these books. All you have to do is go over to Amazon. There are links in the description of this video. Click on there. It'll bring you over where you can actually look through the pages of these books to see if you like them. Take care.